Where do you go when you're in trouble? When the stress of life seems overwhelming, to whom do you turn for help? I propose to you there's only one place to turn, to the Lord Jesus Christ himself, your ever-present help in time of trouble. I will call upon the Lord. Hi, this is John Stemkowski, and it's so good to be back with you today for the next in our series of Encouraging Words. In my opening, I propose some questions for you. What do you do when you're in trouble? Where do you go? To whom do you turn for help? Well, these are all real, solid, and completely relevant questions to every one of us today. Thankfully, the Word of God offers answers to these questions, and in fact, to all of the questions of life. In each life, your life and mine, we will have trouble, plenty of them, lots of times when we simply don't know what to do. But thank God that we are not without help or resource. We have Him, we have His Word, and we have the directives of His Spirit. So we're going to look into God's Word today to see what He has to say to us about this very, very important subject of where do we go when we're confused? Where do we go when we're troubled? Where do we go when we need help? Let's take a look into God's Word. The scripture we're looking at today is found in Psalm 18, verse 3. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. I love that verse in Psalm 18. In fact, I love the entire psalm. It's one of my favorites. And I would encourage you right here at the front end to take time, take an opportunity to read the entire psalm, Psalm 18. And I think you'll find it to be a great encouragement in your life as it has been on, in mine on many, many occasions. To put this psalm in context for you, it was written by King David. King David was, of course, one of the major figures of the Old Testament, and he had had great victories in his life. But I think of all the Old Testament characters with the possible exception of Job, David experienced as much trouble, as many enemies, as many struggles through life as just about anybody. Now, some of those were brought about by his own poor choices. But isn't that true of us as well? We get in trouble and we realize, oops, I made a mistake. I had an error in judgment. And we get uh, in trouble. But David's saving grace was that he, when in trouble, he knew where to go. He knew that God loved him. In fact, God called him a man after his own heart. Though he was a person just like us, made of feet of clay and, and had sinned egregiously in his life at various times. But God said he was a man after his own heart. Can you imagine that being said about your life or mine? It was a great affirmation that God gave him. And so when David found himself in trouble, he turned to the one who loved him, to the one who affirmed him, to the one who established him, and he cried out to the Lord, I will call upon the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Now, interestingly enough, this psalm was written um, the very day that David experienced a great victory. But he'd been in a battle, as he was many times, and he experienced a great deliverance and a great victory that God did for him. And he was smart enough, wise enough, to ascribe that victory to God himself, to not ascribe it to his own wits or his own strength or the power of his army, but the power of God. He said, I will call upon the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. Now, there are three components here that I want to unpack for us a little bit. The first one says, I will call upon the Lord. And that's the right place to go, and David knew that, and we should too. When in trouble, call upon the Lord. And you might say, why? Well, the second component is because he's worthy to be praised. 
and he's worthy to be praised because he has come through for us. He's come through for you, and he's come through for me countless times in our lives when we cried out to him in our troubles. When David was in trouble, he made a really good decision. He said, I will call upon the Lord. He went to the right place. He went to the right person, the one who could help him. And as a result, he was saved from his enemies. So here's the question for you and for me today. What do we do with our troubles? What do we do when we're stuck and we don't know what to do? Do we stew? Do we fret? Are we full of anxiety? Do we give in to fears? Or do we, like David, make a choice, a good concerted choice, and say, I will call upon the Lord? It's an act of the will. It's a choice, and it's a good choice. In fact, I would propose to you, it is the only choice, because God hears our prayers. There's a scripture a little further down in Psalm 18 that I just love. It says, when we cry to God, our cry comes to his very ears, and he moves heaven and earth on our behalf. Let me say that again. Our cry, yours and mine, comes to his very ears, and he moves heaven and earth on our behalf. Why? Because he loves us and because he can. He can bring help into the equation. He can bring guidance. He can bring deliverance. And suddenly, we are free and we are saved from our enemies and our problems are solved. What a mighty God we serve. Now, that sounds simple, doesn't it? Well, it really is simple. It's simple, definitely simple, but not easy. Those two things are different. Though it may be simple, what makes it difficult is we have to face our fears we have to face our anxieties, we have to face our troubles, and we have to realize deep inside of our heart that we have someone who can help us. And when we turn to the right place, help is on the way. Help will be there for you and me to get through our troubles. So the answer, what do you do when you're in trouble? To whom do you turn? You turn to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now this process this ability to bring our troubles to the Lord and seek his help is a promise for the believer. And I want to stop right here and ask you a question. Are you a believer? Do you believe in Jesus? Now, there are a number of people, I think, that would say, I believe in God. But my question is not really that. Have you opened your heart ever and said, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I humble myself before you, and I would like you to come into my life to be my Savior and my Lord. If you have, you belong to him. And those promises of crying out to him, him hearing you and assisting you are yours. You can take it to the bank. But if you're not, if you've never had a place in your heart for God where you asked him to come into your life, be your Savior and your Lord, then I would encourage you, that's the first step. Because this promise of God's help and assistance through life, being led by the Holy Spirit, is for the believer. And I long for you to know Jesus in a deep, life-changing, and personal way. And when you do, you can follow the counsel that some people they say. They say, let go and let God. Let go and let God. Instead of holding on to those things, being so gripped by fear and anxiety and the stresses of life, you're able to lay it down at the feet of the one you know because you come to know his character. You come to know how he is, how he deals with you, how much he loves you. And then you're able to turn these troubles over to him and trust that he will lead you out of them. In each one of these videos, we select a song for you. And today we've selected a song called, I Will Call Upon the Lord. I Will Call Upon the Lord. It was part of an album we did in the 1980s called The Best of Give Him Praise. And the other portion of this song borrows a verse from a little bit later in Psalm 18, where it says, My Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. This part was added when David looked at the situation and realized how God had helped him, how much he delivered him. And he said, my Lord liveth, 
Blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. I want you to open your heart and let this very solid and relevant message wash over your spirit. Let the Holy Spirit minister deeply to you as you consider the troubles that you face, the struggles that you have, and what the solution might be. Let's listen to the celebrants as we sing, I will call upon the Lord. Take a listen. I hope you enjoyed that simple little song, I Will Call Upon the Lord, and I hope you find it encouraging. You know, in truth, it affirms three things. It firstly affirms your choice when you say, I will call upon the Lord. It affirms God's ability to help you, and it affirms the result. The result is you're delivered. The result is you're set free. The result is you get through the issue the problem that seemed so big until you looked with a different perspective and saw that God is so much bigger. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you and praise you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your great love. We thank you that when we cry unto you in times of trouble, that our cry comes to your very ears and you move heaven and earth on our behalf. Thank you for that kind of love. Thank you for applying your great power to us, your children, your sons, and your daughters. 
We love you, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayer. And now, dear friend, I pray for you. I offered you this message today because I have a feeling that you may be going through something. You may be facing something which is really attempting to bring you down. Satan wants to destroy you, but God has come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. Holy Spirit of God, minister to our friend today, going through a suffering, a sorrow, or deeply in trouble. Holy Spirit of God, draw near to them. Pull them out of the miry clay and set their feet on a solid rock. I pray for you, dear friend, in the name of Jesus. May this be done for you today so you can say, I will call upon the Lord. He heard me, and I'm saved from my enemies. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for caring for us so. Thank you for your great and compassionate heart, and thank you for hearing our prayer today. We pray with thanksgiving and gratitude in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thanks so much for being with us today. We've enjoyed, as always, being with you, and we'd love to hear from you. Make a comment below the video or send us an email and let me know how you're doing. And if these videos are of encouragement to you, please take opportunity to share them with your family and friends. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not yet a subscriber. You can even receive these videos every Friday in your email box by clicking on a little box that says, send it to me, to my email. Now, I would encourage you to put a little extra emphasis on this. I'm going to tell you a little story. I have a friend who lives up in Wisconsin, and he sent me an email recently and was expressing himself how much the videos had meant to him. And he said, John, I turned around and sent them to 40 of my friends and relatives with a little note that said, if you're not familiar with these things, I think you'll love it. And he encouraged them to subscribe, and a great many of them did. If each one of us would do that, the encouragement that comes forth every week from encouraging words would bless many, many people. So I would ask you this week to make a concerted effort. Share them. Share them lavishly with your family and friends and through your social media contacts. And as always, should you need prayer for anything, let us know that also, would you? And we will pray for you. God bless you today. And remember, God is the one to whom to go when in trouble. And when you call upon him, he'll answer you. And he'll take you out of that pit and set your feet on solid ground. We love you. And we look forward to seeing you next time on Encouraging Words. Be sure to watch our three-part series reporting on our recent ministry in Poland and among Ukrainian refugees. Live and blessed be my rock, let the God